I am going to go ahead and get myself started here. So that as I fight my screen. Okay. All right, and like I mentioned, this is recording and I'll stop that at the end before we do questions and that kind of thing. Um, but that way people that aren't able to attend live can access later. So thank you for being on live tonight. My name is Alicia Rich. For those of you that don't know me, I spent 18 years as a classroom teacher in elementary school and then um, have been home the last few years being mom and started my own business last year. So I am now an education consultant and um, I'm just really blessed to be partnering with the Andover School District as a family engagement consultant for the district this year. So I'm doing a wide variety of things to help really bridge the gap between school and home. So tonight we are going to be talking all things homework and learning from home. And I know this tends to be a hot topic. I did my very best to really um, try to come up with a broad range of conversation for tonight, knowing that we've got pre-K through 12th grade families in our district and homework needs really do vary depending on your school, your teacher, what grade you're in. So a lot of what I'm going to cover tonight is hopefully information that that you feel like can can move from grade to grade with your child but at the end i have set aside some time for questions so if you have a question about something that i went over tonight um, in my presentation or something specific to your family or you know what's going on in in the homework world of your kiddo now i am more than happy to visit with you about that so we will just dive right on in. So what is the purpose of homework? This is a question that I think is on the minds of lots of people. And I'm going to be really honest. There are a lot of great reasons why it's good for kids to have homework. And there's a lot of reasons why maybe it's not great for kids to have homework. So I as I sat down and just, I looked at a lot of research about homework and tried to think through both as an educator and as a mom of five kiddos, um, what did I feel like the, the purpose of homework was? And these were the things that rose to the top for me. First of all, it provides an opportunity for children to have extended practice with um, material. So ideally, nothing is coming home with your child for them to do that they haven't already had fairly adequate exposure to in class. You know, they've had instruction, they've had an opportunity to practice with guidance from the teacher, and now the teacher wants them to have an opportunity for some more independent practice away from her or him. Um, sometimes the reality is that for whatever reason, a child isn't finishing work in class and there's something that, you know, there's a deadline on and we just need it to be done. So it may be that homework comes home. That's just strictly work to be finished up. There are definitely times when there's a project or an assignment that, um, class is working on that needs either an extended amount of time to work on it. And with, you know, the bell schedule in middle school and high school, or with the time that an elementary teacher has, it just is more conducive to being done at home, or there are materials that are needed, um, that are easier to access at home. For instance, when I taught fourth grade, we did a big state project. We worked a lot on the research at school, but then creating the trifold board and that creative piece happened at home where they didn't have to be lugging their board back and forth to school. They could use as many materials as they wanted at home, that kind of thing. And then lastly on my list, and I think this is a huge one, it gives parents an opportunity to get a glimpse into what's happening with learning in the classroom. You know, we don't have the luxury as parents of being the fly on the wall in the classroom every day. And so homework that comes home is a great chance for us to see snippets of what our child is learning, how the information is being presented to them. It helps us know how to ask some specific questions. Um, for instance, our kindergartner has a math assignment that comes home every day that they have a new lesson. And so really easily I can tell how they're moving through the curriculum. Um, right now, after Thanksgiving, he started working on addition. So he's been working a lot on things like one plus two is three and being able to count on the pictures and seeing that on the homework really helps me to know 
what's happening in his brain, you know, where his energy is going through the day. So big question for parents, what's our job? What's our role as a parent when we are trying to support homework at home? So a lot of what I'm going to say tonight is going to vary child to child. And if you are a parent of more than one child, you know that this is the case, that there are lots of times that, um, you know, one kid needs a certain thing and another kid needs something different. And um, this is a great way, as we kind of talk through this, to see how this list, even though it's very standard, can look different for different kids. So first, help them get started. In some aspect, all of our children need some support getting started. So my kindergartner needs specific statements. Like we come in the door and I say, okay, time to unpack your backpack. And we're in the routine of, I say that every day. And then his responsibility is to unpack his backpack. His homework folder goes on the table. I look through it. I take out the homework and set it down for him to do. Our oldest, who is an eighth grader comes in, goes straight down to her room, takes care of that on her own. She doesn't need a lot to get started. Um, And then we've got a couple of kids that are kind of in the middle of that, that some days need a little bit more support than others for some kids getting started or that help getting started is as simple as do you have homework and that triggers their brain and they, you know, pull it out and get to work for others. It's going to be um, very directed by the parent. Let's look at your agenda. Let's walk through stuff, you know, a subject by subject. Do you have homework in reading? Do you have homework in math? Okay. Take it out. What is it? And then asking questions like, let's say you have a reading assignment and a math assignment, which would you like to do first? Do you want to, um, you know, do the one that's going to be done first or fastest, or do you want to do the one that, um, I'm going to stretch this so we can see each other. Sorry. I was just, as I'm sitting on this for a little while, I like to see your faces. Um, or do you want to do the one that maybe is going to take a little bit longer? And then when you're tired at the end, you can do the one that's, that's quick, but just having some of those conversations with them. And then periodically we want to check in again, depending on the age and personality of your child, this may be more frequent or less frequent. Um, For my eighth grader, she doesn't need a lot of check-in. I usually haul her down and say, Hey, do you need anything? You know, do you have questions for me? And I'll go down and work with her if she needs some help. Whereas my kindergartner really likes me to sit right next to him because he wants the reassurance as he works through each problem that he's doing it correctly. Um, And that kind of thing. Checking in also goes up goes with following up at the end. So you want to make sure you're doing both, you know, periodically checking in during their homework time, but also at the end, really following up. Okay. You told me you had two assignments. You got both of them done. Would you like me to look over things? Um, and, and having the opportunity to offer some specific praise, I think is very valuable both for the child and the parent, because first it causes us as parents to really attend to what our child has done, the work that they've done. And it gives the kid a chance to just feel like they've done well. Right. And specific praise might look like, you know, I noticed that you, your handwriting was fantastic. You must've really worked hard to use your best handwriting tonight that I'm proud of you for that. Or, um, I noticed as you were doing your math, that you were touching each of the pictures as you were counting, that, that was a great strategy. It doesn't have to be a big, huge compliment, but something beyond good job, because then they know what it is that they've done a good job with the more specific that you are. It's our role as a parent to make homework a habit. And we're going to talk on a little bit later this evening about how we do that, how we set up a good homework routine. But I think it's critical for us to understand that it's not the child's responsibility to create their homework habit. It really is our job as the parent. Their brains developmentally are not in a place where they're good at structuring their day and organizing their time. And so they rely on us for that. Keep it calm. Um, Sometimes homework can cause strong emotions both from the kids and from the parents. Um, After lots of years of teaching, I had parents sometimes call, you know, and say, I just wanted to rip my hair out. They kept telling me I was doing it wrong, or I didn't say it the way Mrs. Rich said it. And so I didn't know what I was talking about. And as much as possible, as the parent, you just want to stay calm. You want to avoid conflict with your child in the middle of while they're working. But calm can also look like reducing noise and distraction and, um, you know, yelling across the room at them to check on them, walk over and sit down next to them. 
Hey, how's it going? Every, do you have everything that you need? That kind of thing. And then as much as is possible, make it fun. So if it's an assignment that doesn't require sitting at a table, doing a lot of writing, can they go sit outside on a nice day? Can they lay on the floor and do their reading? I'm a big proponent of understanding that kids work hard all day long, regardless of how old they are, they put in a ton of effort during the school day where we hope that they are right. And they need some downtime at home. So if they've got homework and things that are required to be turned in the next day, how can you make it enjoyable? How can you start conversation or do some explorations about topics they're studying, things like that? So as much as we can, just just keep the fun in there. So we talked about making it a habit and how important that is. So what kind of a routine do we really need? And I'm hoping, I mentioned that there's going to be some notes I'll share with you later. I'm hoping that those really provide you an opportunity to dig in and look at your, your family and your home and what's going to work best for you. So some things to consider. One is timing. And most families are busy. If you have more than one child, you probably have more than one activity that you're trying to get to. But in general, I would challenge you to look across the course of your week and think through, you know, on an average day, what does it look like? My, my kids home from school at about four, usually from four to five, we don't have a lot going on. And then we start dinner prep and we do this and we get to practice or whatever, but that four to five time on an average day, looks like a pretty good time for, for homework. And then from there, you can kind of narrow down how much time do they actually need? Does your child need to come home and have a snack after school? Um, like I mentioned, our eighth grader, she wants her homework done right away. She's kind of in that zone of school. And so she would rather stay there and just get it all done and have the rest of the night to relax and do whatever our third grader can't do that. She needs to come home, have a snack and go play and be eight for a while. And then she can refocus her brain and come back and do her reading and get any homework done that she has. Two very different approaches. Neither is wrong. It really depends on what your child needs, but try as, as much as is possible to have that be consistent for the for your kids all the time so that they know when to anticipate that homework time is happening. And then you wanna consider the environment. Um, what kind of space are they working in? Again, you want to try to have a homework station. Is that the kitchen table? Is it a desk in their room? Or do you have an office that they work in? It can look lots of different ways. And like I said before, some days maybe homework happens outside on the deck and that's fine. But in general, do they have a space they can go that they know is for homework? And then what is there? Are the materials that they need handy? Are there pencils there that are already sharpened? I'm sure as parents, we all have experienced the, well, I can't find a pencil and it's broken and I need paper and who took the paper um, or I need scissors. And, you know, as, as prepared as we can be and help our kids be the better off that homework time is going to go. And then really looking at your child individually, what other needs do they have? Are they really sensitive to noise and distraction? Think about their senses. What are they seeing around them while they're working that could be a distraction? What are they hearing around them? Again, if they're sensitive to noises and things like that, do they work well with some music on in the background? I actually work um, much better and am able to focus much more when I've got some background noise, a sound machine, some music on, something like that. Some of my kids are like that. Some of them are not. So finding what other specific needs they have. Also keep in mind things like if they're in the kitchen working and you're making dinner, are they distracted by how good dinner smells or the sound of, you know, opening and closing the stove or that kind of thing where they're constantly distracted. So some of those things that may not directly have anything to do with homework might impact their ability to get it done. And then depending on the age of your child, the maturity of your child, these considerations as much as possible, I would challenge you to think through with them, ask their opinion. When do you work best? What kind of environment do you need to be most successful? You're going to get better buy-in to homework time when they feel like they've had a part in it. But understanding that as parents, we have the final say, whatever it is that you decide is that routine, make sure you've communicated that clearly with them. Brains, whether they're kid brains or adult brains, thrive on structure and routine. And so we want to make sure that they can anticipate what's getting ready to happen. It will help with emotion. If the work is challenging, it helps to keep things calmer when they, that routine stays the same. 
So here's a big one and I'll close myself for a second while we look at this. This is, this answers all your questions, right? <laughs> how much should I help? Gosh, over the years, I had this question so often from parents, you know, how much help should I give my child on an assignment? And I've wondered as a parent as well. So on one end of the continuum, we have no help. We have the idea of you should have learned this at school. You should know how to do this. I'm not going to help you. Your teacher needs to know hundred percent what you can do. And then on the opposite end of that continuum, we have the do it forum where maybe the child shows some frustration or some laziness. And we start to just say, especially like I start to think about writing assignments. Oh, I can't think of anything to write. And you ask questions and you ask questions. And then all of a sudden you say, well, why don't you just say blah, blah, blah. And you've written the sentence for them, right? So those are two extreme examples. You want to find your middle ground. And that's a really important, um, that the significance of the word you're there is, is really important because middle ground for my child and I might look really different than middle ground at your home. So here in general is what middle ground means as I think through it. I want to be able to be a support. I want my child to know they can come to me and ask questions. I want to be able to dialogue with them about what they're learning and how they're doing. I don't want to be working harder than they are or using my knowledge for them to complete their assignment. So anything outside of me working harder than them and using my knowledge, I feel like is fair game. And I'm a parent that asks a lot of questions. One thing that's not allowed at our house is, and wasn't allowed in my classroom is I don't get it. You don't come to me and say, I don't get it because that's not a problem I can solve. Come to me and say something like, I'm reading this essay on the American revolution and we're supposed to be talking about the, um, the, the purpose for which the author wrote it. And I'm struggling to figure out why the author wrote this. Okay, that sounds like a problem we can solve. Let's begin to talk through it as opposed to throwing the essay at me and saying, I don't get it. This is hard. So really challenging the child to think through, okay, what feels hard? A, lo a lower level example of that might be, you know, what's this word? I don't know this word. Okay, well, what have you done to try to figure out that word? What strategies have you already used? Let them tell you what they've tried. Maybe all they've tried is staring at the word. And it didn't come to them. So you can provide strategies like, did you try to sound it out? Did you read the rest of the sentence? Do you know any parts of the word? Questions like that, just simple questions, things that we work through, right? But help their brain work harder than your brain is. And that's really where our goal is in finding that middle ground. Now, the reality is there are times that our children really do struggle and homework is a problem. And I don't know... I, I'm probably not the only parent that's seen this picture in my house at my table of that frustration point, right? Where I just can't do this. So first of all, keeping the lines of communication with your child open, those check-ins, like we talked about touching base at the end of homework each day, that's going to hopefully alleviate getting to the point where this poor boy is because your child's going to feel like they can come and talk to you. And you're going to see it in them, right? Kids tend to have physical reactions when they feel stressed about something. It's okay to tell the teacher. I guarantee you that your teacher, your child's teacher is not assigning a homework assignment to be done outside of the classroom that they haven't taught the content on. So, you know, there's, there's a level, there should be a level of understanding. So Therefore, if there's not that level of understanding for your child, the teacher wants to know and needs to know so that he or she can modify instruction, work with your child more. And that really is their job, right? It is not your job as a parent to do all of the teaching, but it is your job or with your child, depending on their age, to communicate to the teacher where the breakdown in understanding is happening. So definitely feel like you can reach out to the teacher, but make a plan for that. So maybe it's a social studies class and your child's just really struggling. If they're in high school, a hundred percent, your child needs to be the one to reach out to the teacher first 
and communicate, you know, how do they feel comfortable? Is email best? Is it going in before school? You know, and usually they know what the teacher prefers. Um, middle school, I would say almost all of the time it's appropriate for your child to be reaching out to the teacher first, although developmentally there are some kids who aren't quite ready to do that, especially in sixth grade. So maybe you sit down together and you write an email to the teacher from both of you and say, um, you know, um, Austin really struggled with his social studies assignment tonight. Um, he and I are here together writing this email. And then maybe he can say, you know, here's what felt hard. Is there a good time I can come and talk to you more about it? Something like that. So work with your child to make a plan for how you're going to communicate to the teacher. And then also a plan for what does it look like at home when this happens? Do you just sit with your head down on the table and cry? Do you get mad and throw things? Do you give up and walk away? Do you have to sit there and complete it no matter how hard it is? Um, you know, what does that look like at at home. And I'm going to encourage you that if you see your child hit what's called a frustration level, which is head goes down, tears come, voice changes, physically you can see them changing. They've hit the level where it's no longer a challenge and now they are frustrated. Learning is not occurring anymore. Stop the assignment. Send the teacher an email and say, here's what happened. Here's how long they worked. This is when we stopped. And I think that's critical in helping the teachers understand what's going on because if they come back, you know, and like going back to that continuum, if they come back with a math assignment that has all right answers because you did it with them and made sure they had all right answers, but they didn't understand a thing that they were doing. All that tells the teacher is they knew it and they did it. So be that honest communication is vital. So how do we manage behavior? Um, Goodness, the things I've heard from parents like, you know, are they really well behaved for you in the classroom all day? Do they really do everything that you tell them to do? Because at home, I tell them to get out a pencil and they tell me no or, you know, whatever. So these are some tips that I have to help you manage behavior while they're working on homework. First and most importantly, you want to listen. And that's something that has to happen all the time, not just within that homework routine, but you want to be a parent who allows your child to feel heard so they can express their emotions. You know, if they say to you, oh, I don't want to do my homework. I hate homework. Instead of saying, you know, don't say that, go, go to your, you know, go to the desk and do your homework. Say, gosh, I'm really sorry to hear that. What makes you feel that way? And just give them a chance to talk to you for a little bit. And maybe it's because they're tired and maybe shifting the timing would help alleviate that feeling. Or maybe that subject feels challenging for them and they don't know how to ask for help. You know, there's all sorts of things that when, when we're asking questions and we're really willing to listen that we're going to get out of it. Don't be afraid to provide support. And I've talked about different ways that can look, but, you know, without doing it for them, there's lots of ways we can support them getting it done and make sure they know that that's what you're there for. If they're doing homework before you get home from work, set up a, some type of a system where when you come home, you set aside 15 minutes that they can ask you questions or review their work. And if they had struggles that you'll be there with them. So they don't feel like they're all on their own doing that. It's also okay to offer options. If they begin to get frustrated, if they begin to act out, say, hey, you know, do you feel like you need a break? Your body seems like maybe it needs to get up and move a little bit. And my boys especially love to run. They love to be outside. And when the world shut down in spring of 2020 and we were doing school at home, at the time I had a fourth, our older son was a fourth grader and he would, we got to the point where we'd communicated kind of, you know, when you need a break, it's okay. Just let me know. And he'd come up and say, Hey, I'm going to go run a lap. We lived in a cul-de-sac where there was no traffic and he would just put on his shoes. He'd go run a lap. It would totally change that mindset. And he'd come back in and be able to get to work. So they don't, you know, they're not always able to tell you on your own, but if you are on their own, but if you see the frustration happening or just the antsiness, offer some options. Hey, you want to take a break and get a drink or let's, you know, take a break and call grandma. Cause I needed to do that. Something that, you know, fill in some time and then you can go back to it or even just offering the option of taking a break or the option of, do you want to move somewhere else to do your homework? Or, um, you know, there's lots of things that you could do. Just changing that environment up a little bit is can be really helpful. Be consistent with your expectations. Lots of children test boundaries because that's what children, that's how, how children learn what's acceptable in different situations. So 
don't be surprised if you're creating a new homework routine, if you get a lot of pushback, they're going to see what really matters to you, what doesn't. So be consistent, repeat yourself over and over. The agreement we made is that you're going to do homework after you have your snack, when you come home from school, I don't want to do my homework. I you know, would you like to create a different agreement or are you just frustrated today? That kind of thing, but don't, don't pull off that consistency with them and then really include your child. So if behavior is an issue and it's ongoing, it's not just a bad day kind of thing. You may want to think about creating some type of a homework contract and doing a reward system of some type. And it doesn't have to be a big reward or a reward that costs money. Maybe, you know, if they can sit and do 15 minutes of homework, then they get 15 minutes of choice time where you'll play a board game with them, or you can watch a TV show together, or they can play at the park, you know, get something that they're really motivated by. Um, but as much as you can really get buy-in from the child, it helps to build accountability. And it's definitely going to increase the likelihood that they will actually do what they need to do. And then supplementing learning at home, lots of parents look for opportunities to continue to teach outside of what kids are learning at school. And, you know, it doesn't have to be something complicated. Just include your kids in life. If you're having a conversation with your spouse about paying bills and your budget for the month, grab your high schooler and have the middle schooler even have them start sitting in those conversations and, and listening to how you make decisions, let them ask questions, have them help you read recipes and make meals. Um, if you're lucky, like me, you have a child who loves to bake. So our eighth grader does all of our birthday baking, which is phenomenal. Cause I really don't like to bake. So she bakes cupcakes and cakes and everything. And she figures it out and she has to read the recipes because mom is not a good baker. <laughs> she she'll, you know, taste it. Oh, I need to add a little of this or that, but gosh, the skills that she's learning as a, she started that probably in fifth grade. Um, it's been really impressive to see that, you know, so finding things that they're excited about and just include them in life and in what you're doing. And then think life skills. When you look ahead, because time goes so quickly, we blink and our kids are ready to leave home, right? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to be able to do? I didn't know how to do laundry when I went to college, but it didn't occur to me until I got there. And all of a sudden I didn't have any laundry and I was 10 hours away from home. <laughs> I, and with no car, I wasn't going home for my mom to do my laundry. Right. And I called her and said, how come you never taught me how to do laundry? Like what's wrong with you lady. Right. And she, her response was, cause it was easier for me to just do it myself. So think life skills. It hundred percent is easier for us to just do it ourselves. But what do we want our kids to be learning? Do we want them to learn how to clean their own room, how to clean toilets, how to do laundry, and then just get them involved in those things. Um, because I think those are the areas of life where sometimes it's easy to forget that we need to be teaching. And so be intentional with teaching the things that aren't inside books. Now read with your child, you know, all the time, but we, most of us know we should read with our child. Do we also know we should be cooking with them and cleaning with them and going and doing things for the neighbors and serving others, you know, skills like that. So those are great ways you can supplement learning at home. And then what if your child doesn't have homework? So if there is no actual homework given, even if reading is not a requirement, I would highly suggest that reading is required in your home every day. And it doesn't have to be an hour. There's different research out there, minimum of 20 minutes. Absolutely. Lots of research says 10 minutes for each grade that they're in. So it's reasonable for a first grader to be able to spend about 10 minutes reading. Um, maybe not on their own always, right? But reading can look lots of different ways. Reading with them, them reading to you, you reading to them. Uh, our middle schooler and I, we are reading through the Harry Potter series together and I'm reading it out loud to her. She's a phenomenal reader. She's almost 14. She doesn't need me to read it to her. We're just having fun and we love it. It's a great time for us to be together. So definitely read, read, read. And then this is huge. Just let them be a kid. There's so much time that children's lives are structured and that they don't have control over and having some of that unstructured play where they get to decide what they want to do and how they want to do it and make up games and be creative. Gosh, they learn so much in those times. So don't be afraid to just let them play. So that brings us 
officially to 